now with the only tri-state forecast that's independently certified most accurate. Here's Chief Meteorologist Kevin Robinson. Well, I think this shot right here really tells the story for us as we head into the overnight hours. While we're not terribly concerned about severe weather, it is going to get noisy. Each one of these little strokes represents a lightning strike, and you can see how the skies are really lit up out to our west tonight. The good news, these storms will weaken some as they move in our direction, but I don't think they will weaken enough to prevent us from getting awakened overnight by a few loud rumbles of thunder. As I mentioned, the best threat for severe weather will be in this yellow shading area, really farther southwest of Cincinnati, well southwest. Southwest of Louisville, back down towards Evansville. For us, a marginal threat that we could see a strong wind gust or two. But again, I'd be surprised if we had any severe weather overnight tonight. But it will get noisy again later on towards the pre dawn hours. Outside of the airport now, 52 degrees. We've cooled down from where we were close to 70 earlier this afternoon. Our winds are calm at this time. Check out Power of Five Live Radar. It is on a clean sweep out there. No rain to speak of as of right now. Critical part of the forecast here. Notice this cold front. It has now slid its way south of the Ohio River and now well south of the tri state. I'll explain why that's important here in just a moment. That, as this storm system out in Oklahoma, the one responsible for that deadly tornado, is moving in our direction. But again, these storms are going to weaken as they slide our way. And here's the reason why that front is important. 46 in Indianapolis, 45 in Dayton, 47 in Bloomington, but 60 in Louisville. Notice, yeah, if you guessed, there's a pretty decent cold front right between here and Louisville. Ahead of that front is where the air is a little bit warmer, a little more juicy. That's why down across Kentucky, look at Bowling Green at 67. That's why the threat for severe weather will be better there. For us, 40s and 50s, not too conducive for severe weather, especially this time of the year. So here's a look at future casts. I think after about 2 or 3 a.m., the chance for rain will really increase. And you'll see some reds and yellows in here. So again, there'll be some loud rumbles of thunder and bright flashes of lightning overnight, along with heavy rainfall. But severe weather, not really worried about. Do give yourself plenty of extra time tomorrow morning because look at the radar. It's all lit up. This is at 7 o'clock. Expect a very wet morning commute across the area. The heaviest rain will fall during the first half of the day. That's between 9, 10 o'clock, and then I think it starts to taper off to showers around lunchtime and for the afternoon. By then, temperatures will be on a decline, and it will be noticeably colder out. So downpours with a few thunderstorms arriving here within the next couple of hours. Again, by morning down to about 45. And then for tomorrow, expect for it to be a wet day with the heaviest rain early on. Again, a nasty looking morning rush tomorrow. 52, that's at midnight. That's here in the next few minutes. We won't be that warm during the day. It will be much cooler with a chilly breeze. As a matter of fact, it'll be about 10 degrees cooler with temperatures hovering right around 40, let's say 40 to 45, with some cool breezes and on and off showers throughout the afternoon. It turns cold tomorrow. Night. We drop down to 28 for a low. And look at those afternoon highs Friday and Saturday, only in the upper 30s. There could be a flurry or two on Friday, but really the big story heading into the weekend the unseasonable cold for this time of the year with those nighttime temperatures down into the teens into around 20. Wow, that is some forecast. All right, Kevin, thank you. Uh, last night on the news.